all about farm. We're gonna have a, quite a specific catch up this time because I'm literally two days ago got back from this year's Tunnel Barn Farm Daiwa Masters, which I think is probably the best event I fish every year. I mean, as a, as a festival thing, it's probably the most enjoyable, the most stressful, but the most intense where you have to be head on, get job done every single year. And probably the, the event I look forward to most, if I'm completely honest, and definitely in terms of festivals. And this year, say no difference whatsoever. Massively popular. So I think he's had, I don't know if he had 126, 123. But so mega, mega popular, nicely, nicely pegged venue. I mean, nice and not space for everyone, nice and every other peg or two miss one, depending what lake you were on. Just good pegging. I mean, what a creating most situations a nice fair match. So the only thing that they had had is the, the mood he has still. It wasn't going to be the 150, 200 pound shallow fishing matches that we've had in the past on different years. So just as so many fishers are up and down the country at the minute. They've just, they're not in the mood, really not in the mood. Massive high pressure. They're still all messed up from spawning. Oxygen issues are struggling at every single venue just because of the weather that we've had. They're just not in a, a really happy fish feeding mood at the minute. So it was going to be a tricky one than we've ever had before. A lot more technical, a little bit peggy in some situations, but a much harder match. Where for me, that's the exact sort of thing I want. Where you've got to think about it a bit more, fish more lines, fish a little bit more delicate. It's just... You've got to think about it a bit more, which for me, I mean, that, that, that's how I'd rather have it. I don't want to be going there to fish for 200 pounds shallow every day. I want to think about it. 100 pounds for me is the, the perfect sort of weight to fish for at their menus. And that seemed to be how it was. Maybe a bit tougher than that, but yeah, really, really good. So it fished, it'd been fished really heavily as well. It'd been fished Saturday, Sunday, both the matches had fished quite well. I think 117 and 106 had won the match. Matty won the match on 100 and with 109, I think he had 106 on a Saturday, even though he didn't get out of bed, but we'll talk about that later. He got out of bed a bit late, drew the best peg at Tuttle, but he still got job done, so we let him off. Um, so it's been fishing all right. So come the first day, and as usual, there is no other place that I was ever going to draw than New Pool. I mean, if New Pool's in, then at some point I am going to be on it. That, that's where I seem to draw. Um, and for this one, of course, first round, I've drawn on there again. Tom's drawn me peg 36 which weird one it's sort of in the skinniest shallowest bit of the lake with your back to the canal and the wind was off my back but it's only five peg sections so fortunately i was first pegging my section and it was 36 38 40 42 44 and i felt that it had half a chance the only issue was always going to be 44 which is a really really good peg in a bowl area on new pool that it was just going to be really really hard to beat and a decent angle was on it steve peplo was on it he not daft at all, so he was going to catch some fish. So I knew we were up against it. And for company as well, I've had to stay open shot on me right, although he's in the next section. So he was really in trouble because all the fish were further down the lake and his section actually went onto the better pegs. But I've got away with it. I'm in with the, I'm going to say the harder, the, the rubbishy part of the lake for how it was fishing. Um, so because of that, we almost knew how it was going to be. We knew it was going to be tricky. It was going to be a tick over day. It was going to be 50, 60, 70 pounds sort of target if we did well. So because of that, I set up a million different things, or nearly a million, about 900,000 odd different rigs in that I've had a um, pellets down the middle. I'm not going to tell you. We're just going to talk about what we did during the day. And I've started on pellets down the middle. Safe way uh, of seeing what's feeding. So I've started on top two and two, which is down the middle, very, very narrow, a little bit there. And I fished hard pellets, and I just fed five hard pellets and like a little pinch of four, three or four micros, because I'd seen some fizzing down the middle which is a big thing, I talk about that a, lot, that a lot on Snake Lake venues, is working out where the fish were. And because there was a big pressure drop, it had gone a lot cooler for the first day. It was quite windy, a bit overcast, similar to today. And the fish were definitely happier being in deeper water on the first day. They weren't in the cover. They were everywhere rather than just in the cover, which is what happened later on in the week, but we'll talk about that. Yeah, so I started on pellets, just sat really, really patient. Not had many bites, I've had five or six bites in the first 40 minutes to an hour. That was, was that a ginger one? Fish. We're going to catch a ginger today. <laughs> um, what are we on about, did you? Did we see the ginger? Ginger's famous. What are we up to? So I've started on that. I've had three F1s and two skimmers. But straight away, it's like, this could be all right, but don't know. Opposite me are bagging now. I mean, 44 has gone straight in. I think he said like 20 fish in the first hour, just there and there, just taking over. So straight away, it's like, right, we're, we're in trouble here. Um, there's no way we're in the section almost after an hour. 
So I've swapped my casters. The same as it's been mega popular at Partridge at the minute, feeding casters to your cover and fishing both shallow and on deck, but predominantly on deck. It's just been the way at so many snake lakes because them fish are all want to be in cover. Because it's been high pressure, it's been hot and sticky. It's just where they want to be. They want to toss it off in the rushes. That is where they're happy at the minute, at the moment. So I've moved over to there and it's been, for an hour, it was steady. It was like, it was never fast and furious. It was just all right. I mean, we just caught a few fish on bottom. I never had a fish shallow all day. But you'd get like little runs of three and four, decent F1s as well when you got one. And I thought, yeah, this, it'll tick over and then I'll catch better later on. When in reality, it was the complete opposite. So me and Steve had nearly the exactly the same match in that we went across. It was decent, we were catching fish and we thought, yeah, this is doable for 70, 80 pound. And it just went flat, it just completely fizzled. Because of the way you're fishing, because you've been quite aggressive and you're feeding casters regularly with a catapult. The problem that you've got is you need to make the noise to get fish in your peg. But because you're doing that so regularly, there's very quickly a build up of bait on the bottom. And it just felt like that's what happened. That you got more and more bait in your peg and slowly there were, you just couldn't get a bite because there were so many casters on the bottom because you're trying to make something happen. And for both of us, them lines just went completely flat and come the last two hours, we never even had a bite on those lines. And in fact, the, the two of us, probably the first, third and fourth hour, we possibly didn't catch an F1 between us for that time. It, were, it was just really, really poor. It was really hard to get a bite. We might caught a couple of stockies and that. Um, luckily for me, I've, I've tried all sorts of things in that time. I've tried pellets across, pellets down a little bit. Tried to make me two edges work where I've got like one fish off each. There were fish, it felt like there were fish. You weren't getting indications on your rig, but there were fish topping everywhere and just an odd sign. They're just not eating, they're just really, really not happy. They weren't eating. They just want to sulk, or in our area anyway. But fortunately, I've had a little spell where I've fed some maggots out my hand. I've swapped my pellet line to maggots for the, probably the, fourth hour i've started feeding some maggots over the top of it and i've gone over that and i've had eight in the last hour but it was like winter really weird you could just feed two lots of five and then with a really really light one mil bristle like a winter style rig you just have to sit you never got a bite on the settle it was just case of sitting 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 and you get the odd little pimp coming up the odd little bubble in your peg and you get a little tiny dip and you're whacking it on and it really really weird like winter fishing um and i've got lucky i've ticked over I've had eight of these in the last hour that's got me second in section. So I was a million mile behind uh, Steve Peplow. I think he's had, I'm gonna say that 85 pound. Um, so I was second in section with 50, I think I had 51, 52. I've just beat me dad to upset me dad. I think he had, uh, Steve's had 49. But anyway, he's in different sections, so it was all right. But yeah, 51, 52 pounds, second in section, which at the time, excuse me, I thought that's all right. I'd still win it with four points. In reality, I couldn't. We needed three points to win the event. There were Come the end, there's four people on, four people? Four people, excuse me, on three points. So little didn't know I was out of it for the chance of winning on the first day, but I didn't think that, I thought I'm still winning this. I'm still having it. So next day, in fact, that, that lake fished quite well. We turned out we were on the best lake. I think Paul Holland won the match that day. Our lake fished the best. Paul Holland had, I'm gonna say 143 or 144 pound. I think Connor was second again on our lake. He won Steve's section with 100 and, 40 pounds, 141 pounds, something like that. Very, very close. And they were the top weights on the day. Paul was first, Connor was second. I think there was a couple of the 120s dotted about, but it was very, very difficult fishing for tunnel barn standards. It hadn't fished very well just because of the pressure and just because everything's wrong. I mean, they're not in a feeding mood due to a million reasons. But anyway, next day, and I've drawn my favourite, favourite, favouritest lake at Tunnel Barn in Club Pool. But I've drawn the wrong side. I love being on. 13 to 23 on Club Pool and my favourite, almost my favourite venue in the country as well. I like being on them bits. This time I drawn opposite on peg seven, which is a very different kettle of fish. There seems to be a lot less carp on that side of the lake and just a lot less fish in general. It's a lot skinnier, yeah, much narrower there. It's probably only, it's not 30 metres. It's less than 30 metres across, a bit narrower where the other side's nearly 16 in some places. Yeah, and there just seems to be less fish there. So it fished ever so difficult on the day before. So my section was peg one up to, is that a ginger one? No, <laughs> peg one up to peg 11, which you're always gonna be against it with one and 11, should win the section every day. And the day before peg 11 had won the section, had won the section, oh, was it peg? No, peg 11 had won the section with 27 pound. But my peg had been second with 26, but when the weights are that small, anything can happen, you know what I mean? That, it was always gonna be a, 
a massively tricky scratchy match just similar to the day before and it's exactly how it turned out for me I had a bit of a surprise started down middle again and it was good really really good for or not really good it was all right for the first 35 minutes I think I had three big ones big f1s and five or six little stockies but it's all right I've got like eight pound already in the first half hour maybe a bit more maybe ten pound Moved across thinking, if they're having it there, I'm going to catch an hard pellet across, which is normally what I'd do if I was opposite on the good pegs. And I went in an hard pellet and I never had a bite. I was like, it was so weird. But I've gone to the corner of the cover. I've not gone into the weeds. I've gone to like the corner, down the shelf a little bit, like the safe area where things normally happen. And it literally didn't move. I think I fished that for 20 minutes, eventually caught a little stocky. But just nothing was happening. Whereas I expected to go in, catch some carp, it to be all right. So my next port call again was my casters, where in front of me I've got a big long weed bed, I fish pellets to the, the right hand point as I'm looking at it, I've gone right in the middle of my weed bed for my casters, expecting to catch on deck and shallow, where I've cut it out with my weed cutter, all lovely, um, and it was good, it, dead, it went on and it was solid, yeah, with carp as well, I had four carp in four chucks, I was like, what is going on? Why am I catching them on casters on bottom when I'm fishing pellets three metres away and I can't get a bite? It's just what they're eating and location more than anything. They're all buried under this cover. Because different day as well on the second day. Very, very high pressure. Just everything's hiding. Everything wants to be under these undercut banks and in the weed beds. So I've had a lovely spell. I've had like four car, five or six F1s all on the bottom. Not many, many bites. Just sitting, being patient, odd indication, and then clonk and you get a decent fish. And again, just as the day before though, the same thing happened in that the fish leave your peg and you try and keep ticking it over by putting a bit of bait in and pinging to make something happen with these casters. And exactly the same, you just feel that you put slowly too much bait in your peg and you can't get a bite on it. Come three hours in, literally I cannot get an indication across. It's like I've, I've wiped my old peg out. I've, I've tried to bring various other lines into it, started to a next weed bed, never had a bite on that. Tried the mud, never had a bite on the mud. It's just really weird. And just as the day before, I had to come down the middle for the last two hours and just be patient. And you'd see these odd little pimps coming up, go back in on maggots, sit, sit, sit and wait, and you get a clonk. And you'd catch a big two pound F1, maybe every 15 minutes, not a lot of bites. Same with down the edges, they got caught two that way, two that way. It's just all about rotation, but you never felt you knew where your next bite was coming from. You'd often try and rotate, but you'd go there and wouldn't get a bite and have to go middle, get one. Go to that one, not get up. It was very scatty. You never knew, you never knew where your next bite was coming from. So struggled through all day again. But again, got fairly lucky. In that, of course, a big stamp of fish, which has just seen me clear on that one. Not to win the section. Mikey Williams has done well on peg three. He's fished worms and caught quite a few smaller F ones, but he's won the section with seventy five pound, which was, I think, that was the best weight on that bank all week. So he did really well there, Mikey. Um, and our second was sixty one, sixty two pound. So again, kept me in second. I still felt I could sneak in, but the reality of it was uh, with four points, I was miles behind. I think I, with four points on the second day, I reckon I was in 25th place or something stupid like that. So I honestly thought, tomorrow, what am I doing? I thought, it, it's, I might not get any money tomorrow. There's a chance I'm gonna go the Masters. And at that point, I've still not won a penny. So I'm really, really worrying. So there's a big gang of, I think there were about seven or eight people maybe more, maybe the top 10 had two points. So I think Paul Holland were leading the way um, due to the weight, I think he had about 200 and something pound at that point. Um, Matty Dawes, my mate Matty Dawes wasn't far behind and there were loads. And I think on the day it fished a bit harder. I think Christian won the day that day, uh, on the second day, off 20 on the MPEG on Canal 23. I think second was opposite. So that was definitely an area to draw all week uh, with some fish, but so it fished a little bit trickier that day. So back home, and travel back again the next day. I did a lot of miles traveling it there and back um, every day, very, very tired. But I was on to the last day. I pleaded with Tom, said, do the favor, mate, give me a special one. And he duly obliged with what I definitely reckon is the best peg on Tunnel Barn Farm. And he said, give me a peg. I've always wanted to go on in 15 on High Pool, which for anyone that's been there, it's just, it's phenomenal. You're on this big point big massive void of water in front of you and two islands to go to. So if you mess up on one, you just start again on another and start all over again on the best area of the lake, which when it's fishing tricky, all the fish congregate there anyway. And it's, it's just, it's mega. And it was also the peg that me mate Matty Dawes had drawn on the Saturday when he rocked up at about half two in the afternoon and still won the match. So it just show how good the, the peg is. It's a, 
a serious, serious peg on the venue. But more importantly, all I was interested in was giving me a chance of firstly winning the match. I mean, there was a good, a really, really good payout for winning the match. There's, I think it was 650 quid for winning the match on the day. But of course, as well, with that event, they have the biggest weight of the week prize, which was 1180 quid or something silly, which at that point, Paul Allen was winning with um, 140, I think he had 144, I'm going to say 144 pounds. So re really, really weird. I was just speaking to Andy and Rich about it in that it's the first time I've ever gone to a peg knowing the weight that I had to beat. Really weird situation to be in that all I'm interested in is beating that weight. I mean, it, it's worth, well, potentially it was worth 2,000 odd quid with winning the match, as section, everything else. It was going to be over two grand to, to get job done on that peg. So that's all I thought of all day was literally beating that weight. So I kept it really simple. I plumbed up a million different lines and had everything ready. But in actual fact, it turned out to be a, my right hand island that I fished to um, was my caster shallow line. And my left hand island was going to be my pellet, hard pellet on deck, maybe an odd sucker in the grass if they came up, but I never actually caught any on that. Just two lines, really simple, really positive. When I'm blasting pellets, blasting casters, being really aggressive all day long. And it, it worked. It didn't work perfectly because I had the issue of the fluff. If anyone's been to Tunnel, they'll know it during the summer when the wind comes. With the willow trees, it's like it snowed with fluff on the water. It was horrible, it was white everywhere. So really tricky to get your rig in. And it also massively hindered me shallow fishing because I couldn't turn my rig over. You had to just go in with a, an overshotted rig or a little little bulk rig and drop your rig in. You couldn't ever lay it through the water and fish nice. So because of that, my caster fishing always took a back seat. I used my casters to rest my main line. And my main line was this left island where the wind was helping keep it a little bit clearer of the fluff. There was still a lot there, like, but it was helping a bit. But also my left island is where the carp live. The carp live just around the point. That is the area on the lake where all the proper commons and mirrors live on that lake. And I knew that, which is why I wanted to fish pellets there. So my right hand line has been my cast a shallow line that I've intermittently gone on and I'd catch, I'd catch three or four quite quick as soon as I went on it. But they were a smaller stamp and it was just faffing about. It was, it's awkward fishing to my right, because I'm right-handed, it's not nice fishing that way. My bait over here, it's just a pain. But it let me tick over whenever I needed to rest my pellet line, which if I'd have fished it all day, it'd probably been better. I did keep coming off it thinking my casters was going to be the one I catch a weight on. But I kept coming off my, my pellet line, but it just ticked over lovely all day. And it started with stockies, then it went to big F1s, then it came to F1s and an odd carp. I caught quite a few big old carp, like six, eight, I'd won about £10 as well before going completely in last hour where I could just sit there last hour with very, very few indications, keep pinging a few pellets over it, keep cupping a few in just with a, a four mil. I fished a coppins pellet on the hook, but then I've just fed four mil fishery pellets and gave them quite a bit of bait. And you'd sit there nice and patient and you get a bite and it'd be a carp. So last hour I've actually had eight fish for, well that net went £40. But I've, as well, I was kicking myself a bit because I lost quite a few fish in a dead weird situation to be in because the fighting, weird, like really, really weird. And I'd hook half my carp and they'd try and pull my top kits off. They'd be right around the island, pull him around and I'd drag him around and land them. They were all the ones that actually got in. Whereas I've had half a dozen, I've had more than that, probably had about 10, but I've lost half a dozen. Do you rook them? And these are proper fish, they're like four to six pounds, some of them. And they literally come straight to the top like skimmers and just wobble in. So they're just like nodding, like big daft bream all the way in. And they're so hard to keep on the hook because I've got, I've got decent elastic on, I've got our orange stuff, which is 12 to 14. I mean, because I need that to land these 50% of the fish that are ripping me off around the island. But because I've got such elastic, they ping me up. So I've had six of them, literally, where they've had the mouths out the water halfway in, and I'm shipping back so slow, and they just ping the up. And I've watched these, like, five and six pounders just sitting there on the top, swimming away. So I honestly thought I'd, they'd cost me doing well. With a few other things, the fluff, obviously, had driven me mad. But... Fortunately, it didn't. I was very, very lucky and come the way in, I managed £149, which not only won the match, I took home the, the 1100 odd quid for biggest weight of the week, which was a, a massive, massive consolation. To go home with a couple of grand in my pocket was lovely, considering on the way there that morning, I was not winning a penny. So luckily, the, the results went my way as well in that quite a few people had real bad days uh, on the final day. And I snuck into the mainframe, I snuck in on 10th which he paid, I think he paid 12. So we got a few quid for that as well, and it made it, I mean, a real profitable and very, very enjoyable week. So the overall result, it were massively tight as usual at the top. I mean, I think um, 
we'll top up with a first. Mitch, is it Mitch or Morgan? I'm going to mix up. Mitch Davidson. He's done really, really well for his first ever Masters. He's managed to win again with three points. He's had three, two quite tricky pegs, if I'm honest, on extension. That's where he's done really well. And he's had a nice day on the last day to catch £85 to, to win this year's event. So massive, massive well done to him. Unfortunately, me, me, yeah, me mate Matty, he won his section all three days and just fell behind. I think he was about £10 behind on weight. So I really did feel for him. I'd have loved to have seen him win it again. But he, he's, again, fish phenomenal. And after chatting to him every day, I don't even think he could have won. I don't think he could have caught another £10 anywhere he's done. He's done really, really well with, uh, with every day. And I think third... I don't know if it's Jack Danby or Steve Barraclough. They were third and fourth, again, both with three wins. Both done really, really well. So that made up top three. Massively, massively unlucky to Paul Holland on the last day. He's been, he's the most consistent angler at Tunnel Barn and has been for the last couple of years by a long way with the, the work he's put in. And again, he just gets so unlucky on that last day. He always draws a peg that just isn't capable on the last day. And that he drew 31 on new with, you needed to have cover on that last day and he didn't. It's the one area that's phenomenal in low pressure, but in high pressure, no good there. But I think 11 ounces cost him winning the event overall. I mean, Jack Danby managed to beat him off 35 by 11 ounce, and that's snuck Jack. But anyway, so massively unlucky to Paul. I'm sure he'll win that soon. And other than that, it, it was, there were some great results. There. Everyone caught plenty of fish, and it was almost nicer it being a bit harder. It kept everyone really, really interested. Even on the last day, I think there were only two or three empty pegs, which is, for an event of that type, considering how tricky the fishing was, I mean, that lovely incentive to get the biggest weight of the week keeps everyone fishing right till the very end. And say a massive thank you has got to be said to both Tom for running the events, Catch More Media, and all the staff at Tunnel Barn that look after us and just make it lovely. They make it a lovely, easy run event that all the results are publicised, the draw's nice and fluent. It's just it's just a lovely place to be, of course, with lots of fish. So I'm massively looking forward to that next year. Hopefully I'll get my finger out and be able to go a bit better because I'd love nothing more than to get my name back on that trophy again. But thank you very much for watching that and we will see you all very, very soon.